Hi. So the sound. Actually, the sound. Maybe it should be a bit quieter. Okay. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Let it be like this. Like this. Okay, like this. Well. I'm going to solve one more contest today. Well, today it's the only contest I'm going to solve. I mean, it's my first contest since this one. <sighs> Opa. Let's choose a team. This time I'm solving these problems with Pelterator. So it's a great pleasure to have Pelterator as a teammate. Or Pelterator, I don't know. Um, let's go. Quarius? It's not a problem for me. So we're given a graph, a weighted graph. The length of some path between two vertices is the bitwise XOR of weights of all edges belonging to this path. There are three types of queries. Add an edge connecting X to Y with weight D. Remove an edge connecting vertex X to vertex Y. And calculate the length of the shortest path. Okay. <laughs> so... So it's quite easy idea wise. What do I mean? I mean that actually it's easy to see that if we have a tree, first of all, if we move through an edge that way and that way, it cancels out. So there is no reason to do that unless we want to reach some cycle. So, this is like a trivial cycle of length 2, it is not interesting. However, in the graph, there might be some non-trivial cycles. And it really makes sense, for example, if we want to go from this vertex to this vertex, sometimes we would like to do like the following. And we're here, and we actually have this cancelled out, but we added a cycle. So the problem actually says that we have some graph. We can add an edge. And uh, if this edge connects... So, like, we have some vector space of possible... of all cycles. We have a vector space of what we can do for free. Yeah. When I say for free, I mean that if we want to move from this vertex to this one, we always take these two edges, but sometimes we also add some cycles. Yeah. Even if we choose a completely different part, uh, path, we can as well choose this one and then add this uh, blue cycle. So actually we always take any path we like and then we add some cycles. So, we have some path, which is simply a number, and also we have some, how to say,
who has some cycle space and we can add any number of cycles in this graph so what happens when we for example connect two components we simply uh, unite this cycle space and this cycle space so if we, if we had a and b we simply get them summed up and also if we have the same component and we add an edge there then we can say that for example we have some spanning tree in this spanning tree there is a path between these two vertices and so we can simply add this cycle the question is There is some question. The question is how to process these queries since we cannot, so we don't have any fixed tree. Yeah, so if we had some tree which always is there in our graph, it would be simple because we can calculate the potential of every vertex which is simply the length of this path and then when we add some edge it is simply adding uh, an edge of this potential not the edge of this potential but for example if the potential of this vertex is PA and of this is PB and the weight of this edge is E, then we add a cycle of this uh, the, of this weight. The problem is sometimes we remove these edges and therefore it is not obvious what to do. Because I really don't want to write link a tree in this problem. Well, let's look at some other problems. Simplified 2048. So we have a one dimensional game. We have an array of length n. So a number appears in the rightmost cell of the array, either 4 or 2. All the cells are shifted once to the left by applying the following algorithm. From left to right. Okay, in this game, actually, it is a DP problem, maybe. However, the DP state is quite clear. What is the DP state? Uh, we have some powers of 2.
What? A again, a number appears in the rightmost cell. And all the cells are shifted once to the left by applying the following algorithm. Well, it's still quite clear that we have an array like this. Then we go down to 2 to the power nk, where nk n1 is greater than n2, greater than n3. Okay, actually, what I wanted to say is not true. For example, as far as I understand, it's possible that we see the following picture. 16, 8, and then 8 somewhere here. So this is possible. I think it is possible. So let's make some experiment. So we have 4... And it moves here. Then we have 4 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 and it moves here. And for example, here we have this thing. Now we have a 4 and then everything moves to the left. And actually we get this picture. Then a 4 appears here. And we have this picture. Then a 4 appears here and we have this picture and then it moves here so basically at most one operation happens at every turn yeah so like the field it, it seems like the field is always filled so since we have a this uh, at, uh, so, for example, this thing has a length k. Yeah, so after k minus 1 operations have happened, the field looks like this. So some numbers which all, which all are 2 and 4s. And here we have something uh, empty. And then it like compresses. So after the compressing phase. So what happens during the compression phase? Like after we have stopped. It definitely looks like. Uh, some 
decreasing powers of two. Which are at least four. Then we have Do we like always have a two here? So is it possible to have like eight after four? Is it possible to have four and then eight? I claim that it is not possible because Let's look which one of them appear, appeared first. So if the right one appeared first, then before that it was 2 and 2. But it is impossible for 8 appear before these merges. So actually the right one 8 appeared first, so it was 4-4. Four, four. But then actually they couldn't merge because these ones should have merged. So actually we cannot have 4 and then 8, for example. It's only possible to have 2 and then 8, for example. Or 2 or four and 4 then. Okay. So it looks like we have some decreasing pattern, then we have a 2, then we again have some decreasing pattern, and then we have a 2, and then we have some decreasing part, uh, pattern, and maybe 2, or maybe 4 in the end. So it might be, there, there might be no 2. Excellent. <clears throat> excellent, excellent, excellent. Hmm. What is so what do, we, what do we have here? Ah, n is at most 16. It's, it's funny. n is at most 16. And also p is an integer. Great. Okay, so actually we can have a dp which says, if we have a field of size f, what is the expectation? One cool idea that I have here is that, notice that if we have an odd number of twos, and then a four appears, this means that we will start over. So we will have a cut like this and then we start over. Why do we start over? Because uh, since we have an odd number of twos and then four, this will never end up as a four at the right position. So the, these two will always be a two. They will never merge. So this will begin a new block. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. What's actually... So 16... It's definitely, so 2 to the power of 16.
Isn't it a lot? What is T? How how do you still make su such problems where T is a number of test cases and nothing is known about it? What are you? What I'm supposed to do? Can I make like the stupidest possible simulation? Or what? What do you expect me to do? What is that? <sighs> Let's look some more pro at some other problems. And then maybe we will solve B if nothing works. So now we have an infinite periodic array with the period of length n. Periodic subarray of array A is an infinite periodic array with a period of length S. That is a subsegment of array A. Starting with position L. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get it. A periodic subarray is superior if when attacking attaching it to the array A starting from index L. Any element of the subarray is larger than or equal to the corresponding element of A. Oh, I see what you mean. Find the number of distinct pairs LS corresponding to the superior periodic arrays. Okay, I think I'm going to just have a total of zero and go to sleep today. Little elephant and broken sorting. Little elephant loves permutations of integers from 1 to n, but most of all he loves sorting them. To sort permutation, the little elephant... Why do you call him the little elephant if it is a name? If you write him from capital letters, it is a name and you don't use the... To sort a permutation, he repeatedly swaps some elements. As a result, he must receive a permutation 1n. This time, the little elephant has permutation p1, etc. pn. Its sorting program needs to make exactly m moves, and during the ith move, it swaps elements that are at least at, at that moment located at the uh, eighth and b ith position. But the little elephant sorting program happened to break down and now on every step it can equiprobably either do nothing or swap the required elements. Oh, now the little elephant doesn't even hope that the program will, th will sort the permutation, but he still wonders. wonders. If he run the program and gets some permutation, how much will the result of the sorting resemble the sorted one? For that help the little elephant find the mathematical expectation of the number of permutation inversions after all moves of the program are completed. We'll call a pair of integers i, j and inversion in permutation, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, if n equals 2, the problem is kind of easy because it is always one half. Again, a real number. Where are rational numbers modular m? I'm not used to outputting real numbers. 
It's actually rare these days. I only remember like... Uh, I only remember it when real numbers matter at all, when it's a geometry problem and nothing more. Nothing else. Actually, maybe for every pair of elements, we need to find the probability that they were swapped. Yeah, for example, let's look at the following situation. We have one, two, three. Yeah, then with probability one half, we swap these ones, and with probability one half, we swap these ones. Then for example, for these two elements, we definitely swapped them exactly one. Ah, actually AI and BI can be... Oh my god. Okay, let's not, for now so, uh, solve the problem when AI equals BI minus one. Always. Okay, so... Here... We definitely swapped one and two. We definitely swapped one and two. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, maybe I can solve it in like n square m time. So let's have our array n. And for each prefix, we calculate the expectation. Yeah, so like dp i j is the expectation of number of pk's such that k is at most i 
and pk is at most j. So let's calculate such n squared numbers. Okay. Now we are swapping. We are swapping two elements. So PI and PJ. Okay. Hmm. So with probability one half, we add all of this. So first of all, with probability one half, these ones are swapped. Mm. So the problem is, I need to like uh, calculate the probability that, for example, pi equals two and pj equals five. And in that case, I add one half. However, these two events, they are dependent. Yeah, for example, if initially I had two and five here, then they are not independent. They are independent because I already know that this is two and this is five. However, if I have already swapped them once, now they are dependent. So if I know that here I have two, then I'm definitely having here five. Mm. So they are dependent and therefore the usual thing that we want to do with uh, mathematical expectations doesn't work here. So we, it seems like we need to solve problem B and pray that T is not a big number. Okay, let's hope that I can spend like 2 to the power 16 time. Let's hope that I can do it. Fine. Let's assume that I can do it. In this case...
like I need to calculate the probability. So so uh, let's call the situation when I have an odd number of twos and then I four. Let's call it a failure. So I want to find the probability that the first failure happened after like some number. Okay, first of all, let's divide everything by two. So simply an odd number and then a two. So this is a failure. So for each odd number, there is a probability that I had this number and then I had a failure. For example, if I have one, two, the probability of it is P times one minus P. Yeah, because I had to have one and this is one minus P and then I had to have two and this is P. Also, I could have three, two, and there are two ways to do it. I could have had two plus one plus two or one plus one plus one plus two. And the probabilities are one minus P times uh, P times one minus P. No, this is P times one minus P times P or 1 minus p cubed times p. In total it is 1 minus p, p times 1 minus p plus p squared. Hmm. Okay, so I have some probability to get some odd number. Maybe we need to calculate the probability to have some even number without failures. Yeah, because it is simply multiplied by this afterwards. So I need to calculate the probability that I collected some number without failures. Ah, it's easy. It's easy because actually this is simply a collection of some twos where each two is either one minus P or a collection of two ones. So it's P squared. So actually I have my 1 minus p plus p squared. This is a probability to get a new 2. Then I collect several 2s. And then I oh, like win or lose. <clears throat> okay. Let's look what can happen with some block of size k. So block of size k.
Okay, there are two cases. There are two cases. I collect 2 to the power k or not. So there is actually a way to collect a power, uh, 2 to the power k. I need to get 2 to the power k minus 1, 2 to k minus 2, etc. 2, and then here I needed 1. I, I needed 2. So the, when this 2 appears, actually this will shrink to, to the power k. And then I continue my game. So, to speak. Okay. So, the first possibility. Uh, let's calculate. Let's say that t equals 1 minus p plus p squared. And this is the probability to get a 2 without failures. So first of all I needed to collect 2 to the power k minus 2 without failures. So this is simply 2 t to the power 2 to the power k minus 1 minus 1. I need to get this. Then I need to always get exactly p And now I simply have a game with k minus 1 blocks. I simply have a game with k minus 1 blocks. So, so ans k is this times ans k minus 1. And then plus the expectation if I didn't get 2 to the power k. Okay, if I didn't get 2 to the power k, then I got something else. So let's iterate over what I got. I could get any number. Well, also, also the game could end. Actually, the game could end. The only way a game can end without a failure is the same thing but 1 here. So t to the power 2 to the power k minus 1 minus 1 times 1 minus p. This is how the game ended without a failure. Okay, finally. The game could contain a failure. A game could contain a failure. Let me think. Okay, I also need to I also need to take into consideration not only the probabilities but also the points that I got. Yeah, because now I simply calculate some probabilities. This is not really correct. So ans k, let's let's come again. For example, in this case, I got this number of occasions And in each of them, okay, with probability 
1 minus p over t, I got 0. And with probability p over p squared over 1 minus p plus p squared, I got 2. So essentially, it is 2p squared over t. So actually, for for this number of twos, no, it's not correct. It's not correct. This problem will, will drive me mad. Okay, let's for now forget about this part. Okay, so let's assume that the, the game had a failure. So let's calculate the first failure. So the failure can could happen. We could get a failure. for any number which is less than this one. So if we have this number, this it is impossible to get a failure. So we had 2 to the power k minus 1. Minus 2. And minus 3, so... Okay, so we had an odd number which which is from 1 to this one. So let's subtract 1 and divide by 2. So now we have a number from 0 to 2 to the power... Okay, it should be to the power k minus 3. Well, so any of these numbers could have happened. So let's iterate over it. So we collected this number, which itself has the probability of t to the power i. Also, we collected some points. Yeah, so how many points did we collect? The number of points that we collected is sum of probabilistic points and deterministic points. So there are actually two types. Let's start with probabilistic ones. So the probabilistic ones are actually 2p over t times i. Okay, that's not it. Also, so I got like some binary number. We can write it as a binary number, which is odd. And also, for each so we calculated uh, points to get from here to here, and they are probabilistic. But also each points like this, like this, like this, etc. They are deterministic. So we had to get exactly some points. For example, how many points for getting a four we got? It's actually just this number. It's just it's actually just i over four four.
Mm -hmm. So we can iterate over all numbers from 2 to k minus 1. And we always got i over j over uh, over 2 to the power j but times 2 to the power j back points so we always get this number of points mm -hmm. and after that unfortunately we got No, I firstly write a probability and then I write what happened with this probability. So this happened with probability with, with probability t to the power i plus no not plus but times times one minus p because I got one and this is still not a failure but then I got p and this is a failure. This is a failure. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So with this probability, this probability, we get this number of points and plus ans. Okay, we also need some other number which is called, for example, bands, and it is ans, assuming that we have started the game with just a two. So we just started the game, we got. A two and how it continues. So it's in it simply be beans uh which K minus Pop count of i minus one. Excellent. This is pu purely excellent. Well, there is something nice to this. And nice is the fact that maybe this number is always small. So we shouldn't iterate over bigger values. Ah, P can be zero. Okay, we can, it's easy to calculate it for p exactly 0 and p exactly 100, so we may assume that p is from 100 to 9900. And in this case, t equals 1 minus p plus p squared. Uh, 
and it equals q plus 1 minus q squared, which is still 1 minus q plus q squared, actually. So this is 9900 plus 1 10,000. So it's 1 minus 99 10,000th. So it's about 99%. Okay, we cannot uh, ignore it. So we have to take it power or whatever. Do we? Actually, no. Yeah, th this number is actually approaching zero quite fast so we calculate all numbers ans and bands we calculate these crazy sums and we get the answer Okay, let's try and do it. However, it seems like... Can you please disappear? Can you please disappear? Okay, solve tests. We will need IR stream. We will need Steam. It wants me to play games. Vector. I think we'll maybe we will need algorithm. Maybe we will need some app. And of course uh Krona. Okay, now let's solve tests. Actually, I think we can solve tests. Can we solve tests for all numbers of P? Yeah, because we have 100 numbers of P. And uh, and only sixteen numbers n. Maybe maybe it makes sense to just recalculate all tests. Yeah, maybe it makes sense. So we need to read, like, let's like make static solver, uh, solver, 
and it will be initialized with like 16 and 100 no it's it will be in fine dance Uh -huh. What do we do here? We simply read n and p then we print find dance of n and p and return true and maybe we need here to Fixed and set precision like eight. And here we return solver dot solve of n and p. Okay. I think we will need ants and bends. So using vd equals vector of db and using vvd equals vector of vd so here we have vvd of ants and bands and when we initialize this so also let's like have a number h which is 100 and n which is 16 so what does the solver do okay what does the solver do first of all we need to calculate the answer when Uh, the probability is exactly zero or it is exactly h. So ants will be h plus one and vd <clears throat> n plus one and buns will be also h plus one and vd n plus one. And uh, the solve procedure. will actually simply return ans p n very simple ah. so let's do it and p equals zero p is less than is it most n plus plus p at most h actually i think we don't need them because they can be got from ones and pens uh, so here we we'll say fill ones for me okay makes sense So let's again say that const int n equals ans dot front dot size minus one and h equals ans dot size. Uh -huh. Okay, so if p equals zero or p equals h, then the answer will be quite simple. Let's, for example, solve for two. Okay, actually, let's find the half answer. I will find half answer and here. I will multiply by two. So, so first of all, p equals zero. So I always get one. If I always get one, then I will in the end have this 
situation. Let's explore it. So in this situation, I have n minus one types of carry bit. These are here are these situations, and the carry from two to i minus one to two i happened two to the power n minus one divided by two to the power i times. And for it, I got 2 to the power i points. So this is simply 2 to the power n minus i minus 1. So this is 2 to the power n minus 2 to the power i. Now I need to sum it, sum it up. So sum from i equals, uh, I equals what? Equals 1 to n minus 1, 2 to the power n minus 2 to the power i. It is simply n minus 1 times 2 to the power n plus minus 2 to the power n and plus 2. So this is n minus 2 times 2 to the power n plus 2. Okay. Maybe okay. Maybe not. Okay, so so we say that answer actually, I don't want to fill bands because I will not need it answer. P i equals what is n? I minus two multiplied by two to the power n and plus two. Okay, and like if p then answer is also multiplied by two what's that ah okay let's say that this is n if p then answer p n is multiplied by two okay okay And let's let's the return here. Okay, now let's go through all numbers from from one. Okay, so let's choose our field. So we have chosen a field. We have chosen a field. We have chosen a field of size n. Now we need to calculate the answer. First of all, let's calculate the answer if there were no f if there was a failure. Then the failure happened for one of these numbers. So let's calculate t and let's calculate the powers of t. So let's say that we did t of size. So it will it will be needed up to up to which point? Two to the power n minus one, I think. I will, we will need it up to two to the power n minus one. Mm. 
Okay, let's let's fill it up, uh, fill it up to this number. Fill with the ones. For in i equals one, i is less than t dot size s plus i t i equals t i minus one times t one, and for that actually we would like to start with two and say that t one is one minus p plus p squared. Okay. Uh -huh. Great. Now we need to calculate ans and bands. So first of all, let's start with the number which we collected Which is the number which we collected here. Yeah. So again. We can get up to this number. But this is not a failure. So 2 to the power n minus 1. It is not a failure. So we need to get, to get actually without this 2. To get a failure minus three so and then actually this one is not counted so minus four and then over two which is two to the power n minus one minus two so this is the number of twos before failure so i at most two to the power n minus one minus two Mm hmm so what happened here what happened here so first of all we got lucky this number of times so we got t times 2 to the power n minus 1 minus 2 no t to the power of this number we got lucky this number of times and here what interesting happened oh also times p times 1 minus p i guess yeah this is because we are calculating our failure Okay, with this probability, we got this number of coins, 2 times p squared over t. So let's say that ans pn plus equals. ans pn plus equals what so first of all we got lucky ti times then p then one minus p what is p actually ah i need i need a probability so let's call it capital p i think it will be correct to call it capital p 
Uh, and here we need a small p, which is dbp equals dbp over h. Mm -hmm. Here we need capital P. So, what happened with this probability? With this probability, first of all, we got some probabilistic tokens. We got probabilistic tokens. How many probabilistic tokens? Okay. This problem takes a lot of time. This is horrifying. Okay, how many probabilistic tokens? How many? Ah, here it is. So, this? It should be p squared, yeah? Yeah, we i times. Actually, it should be i minus 1, I think, here. No. Yes, because actually I need 2i here. Okay, whatever. So, probabilistic tokens. I got 2i money. So I get got this time. Okay, let let me remove it. So i times two p squared over d. Uh huh. Okay. Whatever. I times p squared over d. Then. Also, okay, what is this? I think it can be precalculated because this is something weird to not precalculate. Okay, let's precalculate it. So let's call it like VIPTS or whatever. Uh -huh. And here we go. So PTS up to what? It will be needed up to up to this number again. Okay, so let's go from i equals one less than pts dot size plus plus i so we have some i points we have some i points so this is not interesting because carries from here to here we calculate separately uh, other carries from here to here are not calculated separately so how many here? It's just the number of ones here times this power of two. So it's simply, it's as simple as for int j equals two j Okay, for now, let it be infinite. So what do I do? I take i divided by 2 to the power of j. Then I multiply it back by 2 to the power of j and add it to pts. Great. So I need to do it while i divided by 2 to the power of j is still positive. Okay, so PTSI. 
what's wrong here? Ah, I can divide it by T because T1. Yeah. Then I need to add PTSI. Great. What then? And then? And then? What then? Ah, and then I need to add Ben's K minus pop count I minus one. So we can also calculate pop count. So, and this is even easier because PCNTI is I and one plus PCNT I divided by two. Great. And we need to add bands of what? Of N minus one minus pop count I. What's wrong here? Ah, bands. Yeah. And what about bands? Actually, almost the same, but we needed. For, first of all, we definitely had at least one luck. But also, we didn't need this lock here. And otherwise, it's like the same. I, th I think it's the same. Yeah, also, also here it's like I minus one, I think. But otherwise, it's the same. Okay, in the end, we also need to to add something about filling the entire row. So there are two other outcomes. We could just get 2 to the n minus 1, 2 to n minus 2, etc. to 1. Okay, let's calculate the probability and the And the expectation. So the probability is like obvious. It's again, we cal collected this mu much money. So we got this without failures. So we got this number of twos. Okay, so we can say put ans p n plus equals t n minus t what Yeah, we got this without failures. Yeah? And then we happened to get a 1, which is 1 minus P. This is the probability, probability that we got a 1. Great. And the game ended. What is the number of points that we got here? It's easy to calculate because it's simply this, I think. Yeah? It's simply this. We just happened not to get this number. Let's call it int i equals this one. And now it's simply the same and for bands it's also the same but again one less luck and one less random 
and otherwise it's the same. Okay, extraordinary. However, that's there is one more thing. There is one more thing. It was also possible that we got two to the n minus one, etc. Two, and then we got two, and then we got two. So how lucky did we have to be? We had to be like this number of times, so t to the power again 2 to n minus 1 minus 1. But then we got to have p. Okay, it's again if I. Okay, we have I times lucky, then we have P. Then we got P. And then we got... Okay, what, what do we have here? So actually... We were this time lucky. And we also get PTS I plus 1. We got PTS I plus 1. Because of understandable reasons. Yes. Also, if I... No, 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 no. And also, ans p n minus 1. Okay, what about bands? We need it to be one times less lucky. Then we still need to get p. Then we needed to take i minus, again, i, yeah, i minus 1 times p times p divided by t1 plus pts i plus 1 and, yeah, and plus ans this one. However, if this wasn't the case, if i is 0, if i is 0, that means that it means that this is one, it means that this is zero, it means that n is one. Okay, in this case, bands pn simply zero, I think. Yeah, because we cannot get any points in this case. Okay, I am done actually. Let's look. Let's look at the output. It even compiles. Wow. It even didn't fail. Okay, so immediately no. Immediately no. Why for n equals 1 it is 2? It's too much. However, it should be easy to fix. <sighs> okay, let's take some p. 10. No matter. Doesn't matter. So, and n equals 16. Yeah, for example, uh, we're interested in e n equals 1. So, 
n equals 1 should not look like this. So first of all, we started with calculating t1, which is should be around 1, yeah. Okay, let's take n1. n1. So what happened here? If n equals 1, then we always... We always get 0 points. So here we, we got a 1. What is the probability of getting a 1? So i equals 0, so pts should be... Z pts is 1? Ah... Ah, why i is 1? i is 0? No, pts 0 should be 0. pts 0 should be 0. What? Ah, okay, okay. Okay, fixed. Fixed. So zero, zero point twelve. Okay, now this number is for some reason really small. Can I fix it by multiplying? No, I cannot. By eight? Multiply by eight? No. No way. Also, what are these digits? Why are they here? Okay, let's look at something. Actually, actually, it should be easy to look at the answer for two two fifty. Yeah, let's firstly we calculate the answer for two fifty. So if we have fifty fifty probability, then. There's probability one fourth that we get this one, and also there is a probability of one second that we what. One eight that we got this one. Okay, let's also calculate points. So here we got plus four points. Here we got plus two points. And also there is no one 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 here. And also we could get one one two with probability one eight. And this is plus six. Let's calculate how much it is. So it is like 1 plus 1 fourth plus 3 fourths. So it is 2. So the answer, output answer should be like 4 because it is 2 times 2. But in our stored array it should be 2. Let's see what it actually does. So I'm interested in p equals 50. Let's make a condition that p equals 50. So for 1 it's obvious. Let's look at n equals 2. And I need to look at ans 0, bans 0, ans 1. Oh, no. Well, it makes perfect sense. And also I want to look at ANS 52. No, ans 52, bans 52, also I want to look at t0, t1, 
T1, T2. T this is crazy. What is it? What is that? What is H? 101? Ah, I need to start one here. Okay, I need to subtract one here. Now it makes more sense, but still the answers are absolute ran absolutely random. Okay. Okay, so we got zero. So we we have like three scenario. Scenario scenario I, I don't know. We can either get this or this or this, and all three should be counted somehow. Maybe I did not count all of them. Actually, the answer looks like I only counted this one. Ah. ah, so yeah, I actually didn't calculate this at all for some reason. So what is I? I is now 1, so I needed to get 1, 2. So what is the probability of getting 1, 2? It is 3 fourths, which makes sense times 1 minus P, because after that I was unlucky to get a 1. No, I... Yeah, I was unlucky to get a 1. So, what does it say? It says 1 eighth. Okay, I don't like it. It shouldn't be 1 eighth because this should be multiplied by by two ah oh, uh, everywhere here it should be two times i yeah and yeah, because in, in the formula it's two times p squared. Two times p squared. So let, let's fix it everywhere. It seems like I just, just need to fix it everywhere. Okay, let's recalculate it. And check, recheck. Okay, now it's a bit better. Still, it's a trash. Okay, let's go. So now it's one fourth. It's incredible. Now let's look here. Okay, so here. Maybe PTS should be counted starting with one because it's like the number of twos. And since it's the number of twos, it's already divided by two. 
Yeah. Yeah. No. Instead, I what I really need to do is I need to multiply by two the argument of PTS, everybody. This is what I need to do. Okay, now it is four, which is acceptable. But why this is two less than needed? Hmm. Let's look. So we have two zero, for example, and two one. What does it say about this scenario? Scenario I. Okay, for two zero it's four, but for two one it's neglig neglig ne negligible. This is not good. Yeah, let's look at the scenario with P equals one and fix it. So N equals two. The probabilities are quite high here. So for example, why why is this small? I don't get it. Ah, because in the formula of probability here, maybe it's not exactly P. Yeah, maybe it's one minus P squared. Yeah. Yeah, actually it's 1 minus p squared. Let's like call it db qq equals 1 minus p times 1 minus p. And I need to replace it with qq a lot of times. So here it's qq, here it's qq, 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 and qq. Well, now it's fine. Now it's perfectly fine. Let's also make some uh, corner cases. Like for example, 10, 99 and 10, 100. It should be like the same. Or not, or it shouldn't be. Let's just look at some small cases. One I think 24 is enough. Let's look at 24. Mm -hmm. Okay, it starts diverging. It starts diverging just because the probability, well, that much. Okay, I believe it. 
I, I, I sincerely believe it. Let, let's look. Let's look what it says. I believe it. I, I believe it. Compilation error? Really? Ah, okay. Hey, if this happens when somebody's brain doesn't work. Let's try again. Accepted in more than a second. Ah, the tail? More than a second. Okay, I had to do it. I had to calculate it for all P's or otherwise it would be like tail. Definitely. I had no choice. Well, we have demolished problem B in two hours. And now we have three nice problems, which are even harder. Okay, let's think about A. Let's think about A, because I liked it. So we have several linear spaces what we really have is we have some Hmm. Hmm. Do I really need to implement some sort of more algorithm? I don't know how to implement it. I never did a more algorithm in my life. I only know the idea somehow slightly that I divide the segment of all queries into two parts and do something in each part. And at the cost of extra logarithm, I can remove some something. I mean, what? Okay. Okay. Let's think. So each edge has a segment during which it lives. So this edge lives here. This edge lives here. And we have some timeline. This edge lives here, this edge lives here. And no.
Genau. So, I have several segments. I divide everything into two parts. But still, there are removals. There are removals indeed. Well, let's look at the other problems. For example, I didn't solve C at all. I need to find the number of subsegments such that if I start repeating them, then they are superior to their array. Actually, this is this would would be easy if I could iterate over all possible s numbers s. So for each number s, I can go from right to left and store maximum on such residue. And my subsegment should be at least all of these maxima. So for each particular S, it's quite easy to recalculate. However, overall it's gargantuan. Overall it's like N squared. Let's sort all numbers in decreasing order. Yeah, let's sort all numbers in decreasing order. So assume that we have added some number. Then actually it kills... Let's sort them. And if there are several equal, then we, uh, our sorting mechanism says that we should start with this one, then this one, then this one. So going from biggest to the smallest numbers, and if they are equal, then we process them from left to right. Then if we see a number, then it definitely kills 
everything to the left so all segments which are to the left of it they are killed Maybe there is some sort of n squared square root of n algorithm. So let's look at all possible s. There are s which are at most square root of n, and there are s which are at least square root of n. If s is at most square root of n, we can do the easy algorithm that I uh, was talking about. If s is at least square root of n, then n over s is at most square root of n. And that means that in each arithmetic progression there are at most square root of n elements. But how does it help me? So in each Arithmetic progression, there are at most square root of n numbers. In each arithmetic progression, there are at most square root of n numbers. What can I do about this extraordinary fact? I see. So let's, as I said, let's iterate over all numbers from bigger to the smaller one once. So let's assume that we see a number k. This means that. So let's draw the diagram. So this is L and this is S. And L plus S is at most N, so like something like this. So this is, this doesn't exist. Okay, this K kills everything to the left. So all numbers Basically, if S plus L is less than K, so this is K, actually almost everything here dies. Everything here dies, except the numbers which are greater than K. So if there is a number which is greater than k, then this thing survives. Oh my god, I I don't understand it at all. Like it's beyond my comprehension. It's beyond my mental ability. 
So there is some number which is greater than K, actually at least K. And it is not killed. It is not killed. Maybe we can go the other way, from the smallest to the biggest numbers. So, no, I don't understand. So we have several numbers. This is the smallest one. And if we are looking for smallest numbers, let's consider them from right to left. So if I have some number, then it is already dominated by everything which is to the right of it. No, the previous one I liked it more. So let's go through all elements from the bigger to the smaller. And we have an element. It g kills everything to the left, like this. Indeed. Except the elements which are at least key. No, it, it's impossible. I need to spend all of my time on these elements. <clears throat> Yeah, because even if I have one element, the structure of what gets preserved is unclear. Or is it? Or isn't it? So, I need to take all numbers, which are divisors of these difference, and they should be, as I said, at least square root of n, so not many of them. After that, I say that everything that starts here to here is not a problem. However, it's still square root of n queries. And then it is multiplied by n because I have n such elements. And it is multiplied by n because I have n such elements. So it's n squared n to the power of 5 over 2, which is a lot. This is a lot. Maybe again I need to think about this one. So again, I have to find the number of segments, the number of segments, simply the number of segments of length S at least square root of n
such that in them each element is at least its square, at, at least its arithmetic progression. This means that they can check each element in square root of n time naively. Okay, this is no problem. The problem is that the segment is lo long, so still it's a lot of elements. Okay, let's, for example, take S at least N over 2. So I only need to look at the segments which are of size N over 2. Can I do it for them? So I like take half of the elements. And I need to check that they are at least some other half of the elements. Maybe it should be somehow easier. It should be, definitely, because the problem is reduced to an easier one. I have half elements. And they are at least some other half elements. A 50 minutes is still not too little time. I can solve a problem.
Okay, so for now let's solve problem if all numbers are different. It's not hard. Again, I can sort them and if several numbers are equal, then the leftmost is a maximum and the rightmost is a minimum. So all numbers are different. We can assume that. What then? So I have a permutation of size n. Let's try again. I take all numbers starting with n. So if I have a number n, everything to the left instantly dies. So I don't have any segment to the left of n. Which ends to the left of n. None of them work. Okay, now let's look at n minus 1. Also everything to the left dies. Except, except the following, except such size S that here, here, etc, etc, there are big numbers. If all of these numbers are big, then actually it is possible for this segment to be okay. It can be said vice versa. It can be said that if a segment contains a big number, then it cannot die, but it is not true. It is not true because if I have a number 10 and number 9, it can die if they have different residues. Yeah, so here 10 is on the first position, but 9 is on the third position. So if we have 7 here, for example, then this kills this. Oh. Okay, I don't have an idea. Let, let's skip this problem. I, I, I guess Dimit prepared an ultimate weapon and it shot at me today. Not today, actually. It was <coughs> prepared before PTC. But still... What the hell? Okay, mathematics. We have a permutation. We make some swaps. <clears throat> we need to find the mathematical expectation of the number of inversions. Okay, let's try to do the following. First of all, we calculate the expected position of 1. And 1 always makes an inversion with everything else to the right of it, to the left of it. So the expected position of 1 is added to the answer. Okay, after that, let's take 2. We also have some expected position of 2. However, if 2 is to the right of 1, then it is not an inversion. Let's try to do the following. Let's assume that it is an inversion, 
but then we need to subtract it. So actually, when we calculated 1, we wanted to calculate twice We didn't want to calculate. So if if one is to the left of two, this is counted like as anti inversion. So then when we calculate two, and we think that two is to the right of one, and we add an inversion, it annihilates the anti inversion, and we don't get anything. But then when we calculate three. 3 can be to the right of 1 and to the right of 2. <sighs> insanity. It's total insanity. What? Is it true that we can, on each position, just store the uh, the distribution of the elements there? For example, here we know that like one is with probability p one, two with probability p two, etc. One hundred with probability one hundred. The answer is maybe no, because if we have the second array of the same quality, it is not true that it is 2 and this is 5 with probability P2, Q5. That is because these two events are not independent. Can I make them independent somehow? Or consider something else which is independent. Let's look at an example. For example, we swapped 1 and 2. Now we have 1 with probability 50%, 2 with probability 50%, and here 1 with probability 50%, and 2 with probability 50%. The problem is that it is not true that they are independent. So actually, if I think they are independent, then I get 
uh, an inversion with probability 25%, whereas the, the inversion has the probability of 50%. I could fix that, maybe, if, in this case, I would say that this is like half of inversion. So let's say that if Yeah, actually, I like it. So, let's say the following. That if I have two elements, one and two, and there are some... Here is number A and here is number B. Then actually, I don't swap them. I do the following. With probability 25%, I make AA. With probability 25%, I have AB. With probability 25%, I make BA, and with probability 25%, I make PB. Yeah? And then they somehow swap with other elements, something happens. I would like to say that the Expected number of inversions didn't change. Can I say that? Can I say that or not? Can I say that or not? Maybe I can? I can really just write the solution. And then... <laughs> Check by accepted because I like, don't have the strength to prove it. So let's try. Maybe it's simply true, and I'm happy with my score of two problems. So we have what do we have? We have a permutation and a sequence of moves. A permutation and a sequence of moves. Actually, I will need db, vvd, actually, I will need vvd, but I will also need using pi equals pair in print, and using vpi equals vector of pi. And define x first, define y second. Define x first, define y second. And find ans A B. And also we don't have any multi tests, so I create it. Okay, find ans. We need to make VVD probabilities of size N. also a video of size n and then let's go through all numbers and i say that 
the probability that on i position I have AI is 1. Then let's go through all operations. Now I say that on position c dot x and c dot y the probabilities are the same now. So I say that db g equals a c dot c dot x j plus, plus a c dot y j over 2 and now I say not a but p now I say that both of these numbers are now g excellent now I need to calculate the answer Mm, and for that I need to calculate the probability that in the first i positions I have this number. Now, since for i equals 0 there are no positions left than i, it's easy to see that answer is 0 now. Okay. Actually, so I want to say that yi is probability that ah, the expected number of elements which are No, it's fine. I don't want to do it. So yn is a probability yj that position of j is less than i. That's it. So let's go. So in the end I will say that y j plus equals p i j. Before that, let's go through all numbers. So now let's make a new dby, which is 0, and y is expected number of numbers which are greater than j and force is less than i. Initially it is also 0, because there are just no numbers which are greater than j. So assume that y is the expected number of numbers which are greater than j and position is less than i. Then answer is increased by the probability that we have j on i-th position times y plus y j over 2. So if this number is exactly yj, it is counted as a half of uh, an inversion. Then I need to say that y plus equals yj. Okay, that's it. It's the finish. One half and three. Submit. Accepted.
Oh my god. Without proof. Without proof. This is how you solve problems. You don't prove anything. And it works. You don't prove anything. And it simply works. Little elephant and broken string. Oh, broken sorting. Accepted one submission, one accepted. So these problems are... <laughs> So they should be hard. I, I don't know. Okay, just for experiment after the contest, I won't look at the editorial, but I will look at the rating. So it, there should be the rating of these two problems. I don't think they are easy. Okay, let's again look at problem A. So I was wrong about uh, about link country because our graph is always connected. Still, we have some linear space. We can have some number added to this linear space, and we can have some number removed from this linear space. However, it's really bizarre to think about what is removed, because, well, the edge is in several cycles, so which of them is removed is a philosophical question. Yeah, for instance, let's draw something. For example, let's assume that I have this system. Yeah, so I have a cycle 7. I have a cycle um, 28. But also I have the outer cycle, even, even, okay, let's say that I have an outer cycle of 18 plus 9, so 27. I have an outer cycle of 27. So if I remove this edge 4, actually I am, so I have these two cycles, but when I remove 4, I'm left with 27. What's going on here? What's going on here? The problem is I have like this uh, spanning tree. I have this spanning tree. But now it kind of needs to... Okay, I understand. I understand. So, let's say that we want to store some spanning tree and for each horizontal edge or maybe vertical but okay not to the tree edge we want to store this XOR of this cycle which we will call canonic cycle in a set in a multi set very simple The problem is, the problem is, 
that if we remove an edge from a tree it is now like two trees it's like two trees now this one and this one okay so now i need to choose some other edge like this i need to add it and this is a problem because now if i had some other edge like this it is not now evaluated as the length of this cycle this cycle does not exist now it is evaluated as this cycle so essentially i have this thing removed from this edge And I'm not a data, data structure man, I don't know how it's done normally. Okay, if I only had additions, then the problem would be quite normal. Okay, because What I do is for each bit for each bit from thirty to zero, I store the size of a cycle. I store the size of a cycle. So if I add some other number and there is no uh, number with this uh, higher bit, I put it there. And if there is a number with this higher bit then I XOR them and try to put it here so this is pretty standard this is a pretty standard idea however it doesn't really work well with subtractions not with subtractions I meant with uh, with the removals so Ah, actually, actually what I can say is hmm. Well, I need some sort of potentials I still need some sort of potentials and if some edges are per constantly removed from my tree it doesn't look good I need some potentials because even if I don't have any cycles I still need to calculate the length of the path so like okay let's make the following problem a new problem the third query that is not asked when we have cycles so the third query is only when we have a tree still find the shortest or you might say the only one path and the problem is still hard i don't know how to do it so i have some potentials but then i add some edges remove some edges and all potentials are changed there are now new potentials What the heck? What can I do with these new potentials? I don't think it's like more algorithm because... What? I, I don't think so.
So I have I have some I have some tree I have some tree and for each vertex I know the XOR from the root to this vertex and this is an important piece of information if I add an edge this preserves if I remove an edge not from the tree it still preserves however sometimes I remove an edge and all this subtree is now sad actually it's not very sad it's not very sad what can i what i can do i can add an edge and this entire thing gets the xor of this path of the of this cycle so it is xor with this cycle nice nice however first of all i still don't know how it works with cycles and secondly i don't know how to apply this to a subtree because i don't want to write a link cut as i said well i can no i i, I will i will not i don't want to write link cut today this this is even not funny what are we talking about? So we have this operation. Also, I cannot include random. So sometimes it is also as follows. I choose some spanning tree at random, or I choose the spanning tree which will long, which we will live the longest, and then I do everything in linear time if I have a long operation. However, it doesn't work here. It still will take quadratic time. And we have not that many seconds. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we need some completely different idea. Yeah, so let's first of all let's take all the, all edges of with the highest bit, which with the twenty ninth bit. So we already have some sort of graph which might be disconnected. Okay, if we only have this structure, only edges with 30th, with 29th bit, 
can we solve the problem? So we know that this is some sort of connected thing. This is some sort of connected thing. This is some sort of connected thing. So the question is, can we... find a path from a vertex to another vertex with less than okay so actually the question is is there a cycle with 29th bit okay the question is is there a cycle with 29th bit Or even again, we don't have any cycles. Okay, we don't have any cycles. So we have several, we have a forest on 29th bit. So the forest number 29. I am given two vertices. The question is, is the 29th bit in answer or not? And I don't know. Because if these two trees, for example, are connected like this, then there is no 29th bit. But if they are connected like this, there is 29th bit. So actually, it is a tree with weights 1 and 0. And the question is... Are they of the same parity or of different parities? Okay, okay, fine. Let's solve this problem for the easiest statement ever. So we only have numbers zeros and ones. So each edge has a zero or a one on it. And I need to solve the problem. And again, only, only forest. So uh, only, only a tree. I am not asked about graphs with cycles. Okay, so I have several vertices which are called 1, several vertices which are zeros. Even vertices and odd vertices. So this is my structure. This is my data structure. Now, if I have some added edge, What can I do here? I, I don't even know how to solve this problem. When? Oh, when all numbers are zeros and ones. I don't know what to do. Because... Everything changes a lot. Yeah, so, so for example, for example, let's assume that we have a path. It's just a path. But this path is, for example, of 21 vertices. Yeah, so the answer for like three Okay, uh, even 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 if, if if all the edges are ones, I still don't know how to solve the problem. So I just have a tree. I have a path from three to like nineteen, and it is an even path. It is an even path. However, now I take the vertex number 10. I remove this edge and instead I put, for example, this edge. Now, 
no no for example not like this this sketch i remove this one and add this one now this path from 3 to 19 is odd because i need eight edges here plus one edge here and plus two edges here which is 11 and moreover everything between this half and this half is broken i really need link cut tree for this problem well maybe what are other ways to do it maybe like uh earlier tour with with cartesian three tree maybe yes actually so it will be acceptable if i have a cartesian tree and Euler tour so is this like a hard data structure problem maybe i need i don't know what i need i i don't know what i need So actually, I store a potential in each vertex. I store it as an Euler, Euler tour with a Cartesian tree. Then I have an operation, remove an edge, and if it is from my tree, then I take this away instead i put it somewhere else moreover i need to shuffle it so that it becomes the root and i put it somewhere else in this structure and then i also xor equals it with some number which can be calculated somehow okay incredible problem but how to find the answer okay now i can find out so if i have no cycles i can kind of solve the problem because i have two vertices i need to find the numbers in these vertices i need to xor them okay but what about the cycles what about damn cycles? Because if I have a cycle, what does it look like? So I have a big tree. I have a smaller tree inside of it. So I have here a vertex. So all cycles which are here inside of this tree, they are preserved. So I can store them as usual. All cycles which are here are also preserved. I can also store them as usual. Ah, instead of cycles, I like have integers I have integers mm. so what exactly happens so if i have an edge so i have a cycle 
Ah, the same thing happens. So if I have a cycle, then instead of then I get sorted with this cycle, I think. Yes. Yes. So everything is sort with a cycle. So now we have the following nice little problem. We can need we need a data structure which is called how we have a data structure which is multi set okay for example let, let's say it in terms of z z30 so we have this space we have a multi set of the vectors we need the following. We need to add a vector, remove a vector, and XOR everything. So add some other vector to all numbers. And also we need to find some canonical basis of this space. This is astonishingly, astonishingly bad. Astonishingly bad. Why is it bad? So, again, I have some basis. If I add a vector. So first of all, if I have n vectors, I cannot find this basis faster than in O of n time. Yeah? I really need a lot of time. So I need this structure again. Maybe I need this structure again. So I have... like what what is this problem 4000 rating and then i open the editorial and it says like sort the numbers then add them then something else and uh, 2000 rating problem i actually i actually concede i i am quite ready to solve it if it says Euler tour and Cartesian tree but I am really interested in what is it what is it actually about so I concede I will not continue solving the contest so sorry I will start googling right now Okay, I predict educational categories starting <laughs> rated for division two, and it's like twenty four hundred. Ah, oh, twenty nine. Four. Oh. It's not even two twenty four hundred. Okay, okay. DSU. How do you calculate DSU if you can remove an edge? With masks. Okay, this was predictable. But how is it DSU? Okay, let's actually look at all uh, all ratings. Uh, I'm beginning to feel interest. We don't even know the rating. Okay, tutorial. 
Okay, it doesn't have a rating. Fine. Problem C. Twenty four hundred. What? Number theory. And the problem D. Twenty six hundred. Okay, problem D is fine to be 2600 but how is c 2400 are you crazy It was a simple 2400 problem on number theory. And number theory is actually my specialty. Okay. Then it's definitely some square root decomposition. Okay. Okay, let, I, I I won't open the tutorial. I it seems obvious that they didn't have any Cartesian tree. Um, with Euler tour, they found found out how to make, how make how make it a bit easier. Thank you for watching. This was a very strange contest. And I have I have a very strange feeling after it. Kafka ni papstva.